all right guys this is update number three today is march 16th 2018 and i just started putting out some of my lemon starburst so this entire bed here is going to be dedicated to the lemon starburst so i have started them already right here um it's a little bit too close together because these plants can get very large but i have so many so it's okay they hopefully they'll grow and then they they can support each other but um and that's less than a foot apart um, these kind of plants they're very large so i would recommend three feet apart uh, if you're going to plant them close together but um, i decided to <laughs> do them so close but anyway those are what they are so before you put these guys outside it's very important to get them uh, adjusted to the condition so what i do is uh, here's what i'm doing here i put them out here in the sun and then uh, in a few days uh, they'll get adjusted so they can handle the extreme condition then you put them outside completely don't just take them from your indoor uh, grow space and then just put them outside all of a sudden because if the outdoor condition is too hot then your leaves is gonna like curled up and then your plants are gonna die here's some of the other ones uh, this one's doing the best so uh, very soon it's gonna produce this guy just got a trim it was putting out flowers too early so I just pinched it off right here because I, I don't want plant this small to produce there's a few more right here okay and same with this guy here this is a grafted plant you see here it got pinched because it started to produce flowers too early and when it does that it'll stop growing so I, I don't want this guy to stop growing so I pinch all of the tips off and I'm gonna allow the plant to grow more before it fruit and then here's my lemon starburst I'm also picking off a bunch of the the leaves but one of the fruit escaped so here it is here it looks really really cool so I'm gonna leave that fruit because it looks so pretty some tomato all right let's go inside and I'll show you the rest of them all right guys here we are inside the tent and the plants are just looking beautiful they've grown quite a bit since the last update and uh, they I've been feeding them uh, hydro nutrients from the bottom and there is a significant improvement in these plants uh, from the last video so uh, it's very easy to tell which plants have been fed because they are the biggest ones so uh, these here have all been fed so that's why they they're, they're much larger than the one they have not F these things are very very cool because uh, as soon as they get fed they they take up a lot more water and then they put out more roots and then they grow faster so uh, if you have one that is next to it that have been not not been fed yet, they're gonna be a little bit slower. But once they they reach uh, the, the you know where you can feed them hydronutrients, then they're gonna start to grow very very fast. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how I feed these plants, and uh, I'm gonna put in the description below what I feed them. Uh, any kind of hydroponic nutrients will work there's no specific kind that I prefer I've used the master blend I've used the uh, flora series the three parts um, I've used uh, what else maxi grow uh, dyna grow uh, even the the arrow garden nutrients and uh, I think that's it so far but um, they they all will do just as well so there's there's don't have to you don't have to be very specific or picky if you don't want to be so anyway uh, let's take a look at a few of these and then we'll uh, we'll go through the feeding process uh, these are what I added later so they're the smaller ones so the, see here and then my lime my lime uh, I have a thornless Mexican lime tree outside it, it froze to death uh, because uh, I didn't cover it up so it's dead but I, I was lucky enough to have a few fruits that I harvested last season. Then I took uh, the, the seeds out and, and there they are, they're growing. Um, Scotch Brain right here for contest guys. If you guys are watching, here it is, the, the contest plant. Okay, and then these, uh, if you see the ones that have uh, cover on top, those are the newly started seedlings. So they, uh, they haven't sprouted yet. So that's why the, 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 the thing is on. And the reason why it's on I'm gonna tell you 
because the heat mat here will heat up the inside of the cup and it causes condensation to escape if you don't have a cover then you're gonna have to constantly water so uh, keep this on when you're starting seed you see how condensation is stuck right here and it fall right back that way you don't have to water and then the seed will just sprout so that's the reason when I, ha I have them on and it, it also keep these stupid fungus gnats from uh, getting in there um, I try my best to uh, avoid fungus gnats but then one or two of them that's all they need just one or two get in and then you're gonna have like a, a, a hundred but um, mine hasn't been too bad yet there's a few flying here and there and I just spray them with uh, with soap and neem and then I kill anyone that I see that way you can reduce their numbers but uh, a few of them won't harm you so um, don't stress over it anyway let's go ahead and go through the feeding process all right guys here it is one of our plants that we're gonna show you how to bottom water and it's very very simple you want to wait until the roots uh, come out of the bottom cup like this and that is the only time I would recommend feeding them hydronutrients from the bottom so if the plants don't have any roots sticking out don't feed it that's very simple no roots no nutrients okay all right so I have a little pebble there just to give it a little bit of gap between the nutrients and the roots so I mix my nutrients one gallon at a time and then uh, I just put it in a nice little bottle for easy handling so all you need to do every day is give it a bit of nutrients like that so basically where the pebble is give it into around the top of the pebble that's it and then put this back and that is it that's how you bottom feed these and the plants will take these things up like it's candy so they're gonna grow very fast so uh, every few days you come out you're gonna see them uh, grow a little more so it's, it's very very cool okay and if your plants don't have roots uh, at the bottom yet you're gonna have to continue watering from the top and then once they they have roots coming out then you feed them so you, you still want the top soil moist so many people have asked if you still continue to water from the top and I would recommend you do just a water a little bit around here allow the the soil to be moist uh, you don't want to water too much so that the the water would just drip down into the the excess right here and then you add nutrients then that would add a whole bunch of water that would be too much for the plant to take up so you want to water the the to make the uh, soil moist but not enough that it would drain all the way out because you want to reserve that spot for uh, hydroponic nutrients so I hope that would uh, clear up some of the, the questions that people have been asking so what we're gonna do today is uh, I'm gonna take all of my lemon starbursts outside because I already have a bed prepared so um, I'm gonna show you the process and as I mentioned when you take plants inside out outdoor you're gonna have to get them adjusted alright guys here we are outside and I brought some lemon starbursts all of them and the Staracha Hornets I brought them all out here to uh, allow them to sunbathe usually I would have plants very large to transplant already this time of the year but this year I was late as I mentioned but um, this is a perfect time to take them out here because the weather where I am in Texas is nice and warm but it's not that extreme heat that would burn these young leaves so I usually bring them out here and transplant them and uh, they would be just fine because uh, the, of the, the nice cool condition but uh, if you are uncertain and uh, are not sure if your plants can handle uh, the heat where you are, just leave them outside for a few hours at a time. I would recommend start with 30 minutes and then watch them. And if they start to wilt or whatever, take them out and uh, put them in the shade. But if they, they're fine, then leave them for an hour and then gradually move up and then in a, in a three to four days or up to a week you can just leave them outside completely and then transplant them so make sure you do that um, or test it out first before you just put them in the soil or put them in a spot where they get too much sun so uh, here I'm gonna let them sit here for uh, maybe a day or two I'll, I'll monitor them uh, they should be fine because uh, I always do this every year 
but uh, just in case these are my prized plants so I don't want anything to happen to them so they'll be right here for now and then I will put them in the braised bed where um, I have prepared for them all right guys here are the plants in the arrow garden and as you can see it's grown very well so today I'm gonna show you some of the things that you shouldn't do when you have your plants here and that is don't be lazy like me and not change nutrients often so since the last time that I've uh, put the plants here I basically just added a little nutrients and then haven't changed it since then so it's been a while it's um I think it's over four weeks now so you don't you don't want to leave it that long you want to um, change it out uh, when I would say two three weeks at the most and then um, that would allow the plants to get fresh nutrients and then the water would be balanced and all that stuff so that it can grow nicely so as you can see here uh, those two here are a little bit deficient and this one here is okay so when you grow two or three plants in one unit a lot of the times um, one plant will outgrow the other and uh, I think it's a uh, it's really strange but I think underneath here they're actually fighting for resources that's why so the big plants will always have the advantage and then they'll take up everything and then the leftover will uh, will get uh, will get to these guys which uh, is not really good because uh, the leftover are what the plants don't need to use <laughs> so you see there I just turn off the um, the pump but as you can see the root system over there compared to over here so that roots like this are not good and that is because I have not changed the nutrients so that's why it causes the imbalance and then you when there is an imbalance then you would have a uh, root problem or very not developed roots so that you see this here not no roots are coming out of here by this time you should see a ton of roots just like the that one right there and the roots should be healthier than that but uh, because I have not changed the nutrients and all that stuff and I've been lazy and this guy here you see here the roots are like not white and they're kind of like burnt at the tip and that that is a bad sign and usually that is caused by acidic or um, uh, nutrients that are not uh, balanced uh, in your pH so um, I'm surprised that it's still growing so well uh, given that the nutrients is not too nicely balanced but today I'm gonna show you what I do uh, to change the nutrients out of my air garden uh, because the air garden unit doesn't really have a, sort of like a, a valve to let out the nutrients to change so usually they'll, they'll recommend that you buy this pump on their website that costs like $14 or something is like a hand pump that's really uh, not worth the money so I'll show you what I use and then we're gonna change out the nutrients and then we'll go in the tent and show you the rest of the plants alright guys here it is this is called the liquid transfer pump and uh, they're most often used for transferring gas into your car or taking gas out of it and stuff like that so it has a, it's op operated by a battery so you just need one D battery and that's it so here's how I usually change my liquid put this in here into the container and then you slide the air garden okay just like that and then man the liquid is the the nutrients is real dirty and I can tell so that's the reason why you should change it more often okay so turn it on and there it is and you can tilt it a little bit look how fast that is Okay, so when it's done, just turn it off, and then it'll, the rest of the liquid goes in there. That's it, that's how fast it is. Okay, look at how yellow this liquid is, so that is not a good sign. So we're gonna dump this out, and then we're gonna tra tra change it out into fresh nutrients. All right, I just made a new batch of nutrients here, and I'm going to add it to my system. I usually make one gallon at a time. All right, let's turn this on and see. 
there you go. So as you notice here, some of the leaves are not looking very healthy. See they're kind of like dark and then turning yellowish, benting downward. Same with here and then the edges are yellow here. And then sometimes in the middle you would see like slight yellow blemishes. And usually those are the signs that there is some kind of deficiency. So uh, we'll monitor this. We'll come back once uh, everything get all adjusted and it will recover. So I'll show you that. All right, guys, it has been eight days now that the plants have been outside sunbathing. It grew a little bit and you see here there's some uh, burnt leaves right there, but that's okay. And that's fine. And that's what happened when you uh, expose them to the sun too long if they have never been exposed to the sun before. So this is the reason why you should take them outside and get them adjusted before you transplant them. So uh, if you just take them outside immediately from indoor, they're gonna burn. So that's, uh, make sure you do that. So that, that, that's uh, what happens. So these are ready and uh, good to be transplanted. Okay, here we are inside my tent and everything is just looking awesome. So a lot of people wanted updates on how the lights is working. This is what I'm using here, the Kingbo. If you go to the first uh, video, you will see um, that I cover this in details and show you what it looks like and all that stuff. But man, my parents are just loving these things. So all of these are sitting under just that light and they are doing great. My heat mat is working awesome. It, it really create a nice environment during the cold weather. And right now it is sitting around almost 80 degrees. So uh, sometimes it gets really hot. So um, I, I, right now I, I, I have it off, see? Because when I had it on, it was getting up into the 90s and stuff like that. So I, I don't want my plants to burn up. And uh, when you get it up in the 90s, you just have to water so often. So that's why I took it out. Anyway, uh, earlier I showed you the bottom feeding uh, routine. And look at this. There's just a massive increase in growth as soon as you bottom feed with hydroponic nutrients. And that is because there is food readily available for the plant to take up. And so that's why it grows so fast. All of these here are the um, uh, Scotch Brain. So I'm gonna have to select one for the contest. These are my Stargazer here. Uh, I think those are Scarlet Rose. And those are my Kangsta Red Lemon Tree right there. Uh, these are just what I started later. The, the Bikinos, I think. And, oh man, this one sprouted. So as soon as the plant sprouted, I usually just take it off. Unless it's really cold, then I would leave uh, this on during the cold months. But um, right now it's very warm. So as soon as the plants sprouted right here, I remove the top right away so that it can get uh, exposed to light and then grow nice and, and sturdy and not become leggy. So there they are. And those are my white ties there, guys. Uh, I started a bunch, so I'm gonna grow a lot of them this year because my parents and their friends and all, all of my friends, they just love that thing. So. Uh, I'm gonna try to grow as many of those as I, as I have space for. Okay guys, it has been almost two weeks that these guys have been outside and they are looking fantastic. They're, they're getting really adjusted now, so those are ready to be uh, moved into any space you would like it to go, into your garden, into your pots outside, and it can withstand full sun. These guys here, I just brought them out uh, five minutes ago so they need to be conditioned just like those over there and notice there is a, a difference in color of the leaves these are much greener and then these here are a little bit yellowish not yellowish but a lighter green because that's what happens when it gets exposed to sun and then um, you know sort of like the leaves toughen up so they they become a little bit uh, harder so those are good for transplanting so these are much greener and softer so that they're much more sensitive to the sun so don't transplant them right away into uh, your raised bed or whatever or, or give them full sun immediately right now it's uh, 8 a.m. in the morning so it's getting morning sun also it's uh, it's 
it's late in March, so uh, the, can, the weather is still pretty cool. So right now it's about 69 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and a little bit chilly. So um, they're okay to be left out here for uh, uh, a few hours. Um, just check on them if uh, they look bad and start to wither or, or droop, then you need to move them out of the sun. So um, we'll, we'll condition these for a few days and then we'll transplant everything. Uh, and then uh, I'll take you through the process when that happens. All right, guys, here's a quick 10 days update after nutrients change. And as you can see, there is a huge difference in their growth. So once we address the imbalance of the nutrients and switch out everything, the plants react really well. And as you notice, look at how large the plants have gotten since uh, uh, we changed the nutrients. So this has probably grown maybe an inch or two that one as well and this one here it probably grew a little more than that um, it was down to here the leaves was was covering uh, it suffered a little bit but now look at this healthy leaves it started to shoot out more branches and look at those fruits are forming actually fruits but flowers and same with this and even that little one there <laughs> already has uh, some fruits uh, of flowers forming here so um, I may just keep this here and allow it to flower and these two guys here I might just take it outside or leave it somewhere and chop off the fruit because uh, as soon as they fruit they they don't grow so you don't want that anyway take a look at the root system you see look at this one this one shoot out some root before there wasn't any and the one in the back is starting to recover see it, it sprouted some new roots there more healthy roots um, that bunched up roots right there that's what happened when uh, plants are stressed or root damage or imbalance of nutrients which cause the, the the roots to not be able to grow well and this one here as well you see how the brown roots have now sprouted white roots and all those little hairs and long strings are coming out that's the signs uh, that it's recovering so everything is looking fantastic so there it is guys, uh, let's change out your nutrients, make sure it's balanced and your plants will react well. Okay guys, it has been two weeks from the beginning of this video that I show the transplant of the extra lemon starburst. And two weeks later, the plants are doing horrible. Look at what happened. <laughs> See these here, they have been eaten and those as well over there. And only one of them kind of like grew a little that one's been chewed off completely and then this one uh, is also chewed off so <laughs> good thing i did this uh, it's almost like a field test to see how well these extra plants would do before i put the uh, the real plants in these bed so um i found that there were some bugs inside the soil those roly polies um because what happened is i, I try to cover this up with uh, water bottles and they were still being chewed on so the bugs came out of the soil uh, i came out one night and i caught them all over the place and chewing the leaves so uh that's what happened to these lemon starbursts that are extra all right guys here they are i took most of the plants outside to get them acclimated and they have been here since uh what i mentioned earlier probably two weeks now and they are doing great uh, these are the white tie extras here and uh, look at these beautiful plants all grown nicely I still bottom feed them with hydroponic nutrients when they're out here so uh, that's why you see the lush green and the large leaf and you know like the boost in their growth and those there like, kind of yellowish because they came out here earlier and you know gotten beaten down by the Sun so uh, they're not as healthy as these that came out uh, a week later so those are there uh, i'm not going to transplant them yet because um, i'm gonna wait a while i, I need to, to do some clearing so let me show you what i'm talking about uh, clearing some of the plants uh, to make room for these here i might put uh, one or two plants right there in the middle that's some space there but this is basically my raised bed for herbs 
and you have I have sage here and look at these guys I've never seen sage fl um, flowers before so this look like it's going to be like a bulb uh, that's the only one but that's very interesting because I have not seen that and um, those are rosemary so see all these herbs and, and uh, basil of course I always want those look at my super Pekin is doing fantastic here it is right here guys this is what I need to clear uh, to make room for some of my uh, crosses look at how awesome these lettuce are and these here I'm trying to save for seeds so I can do a giveaway you need a tat these are tat soy they're absolutely gorgeous wonderful plants to grow a very very hard hardy plant they can live in cold hot whatever okay those are some other raised bed I need to clear to put those in Look at this. This, if you watch my video for, uh, that I transfer lettuce from cracky into soil, look at this. This is enormous. That is the size of that lettuce bulb right there. So very healthy and beautiful. All right, let me give you a sneak peek at the plant that I transfer from DWC to cracky to soil. Look at this. It's been a week and it's doing awesome. Really nice, recovering nicely. The leaves are nice and firm, and it's coming back to life. So that is going to be the most, the biggest plant I have in my garden right now, and it's going to produce like crazy. Look at this, the size of these trunks here. Like all of those shoots coming out everywhere. That's the beauty of growing in hydroponic, with with uh, sufficient lighting. That's what the type of uh, uh, branches that sprout out of it. Okay, then I have my super Pekin here. Got some crimson star coming along nicely that is the bonsai plant there not looking too great and then I have two of these white tie somehow they turn purple so I label them purple just to see uh, of all of the white tie that I grew in that little plate that you saw earlier only these two here turn out purple so I separated it I just want to see what what happens okay these are this is a reaper that I bought from a, a local nursery my tomato and propagated lemon starburst here and this is a, a, a lemon starburst that is already fruiting look at that man I'm gonna be so happy once this turn color two more propagated lemon starburst and that is my Franken tree the only one that survived crimson star at the bottom super Pekin at the top all right let me go inside and show you a few more plants and then we'll close out uh, updates number three okay here it is two more plants that i'm growing in dwc method that's a diy system man these things are growing so fast once they have their roots established that's my air pump right there so uh, it's grown under this one bulb right here doing really nice and then let me show you the the root for this real quick i keep bringing taking this out to look at the roots because look at that they're really cool and I damaged a few because I did this like so early I did I damaged that one that's why these two are the same size and started at the same time I damaged the root of that and then that's why <laughs> all right guys here are the last few of the plants that I have inside and uh, a few people asked about how well the light uh, has been working for me and I mean it is a great setup that I, I think it works really well because my plants are loving this unit so um, I t after about uh, a f I think maybe a month or, or so already that I've been testing it on these plants and multiple other plants they react really well and they grow like crazy so look at these three these are my scotch brains that I'm doing test on and that is the reason why it's still here and they are also the uh, three of the most beautiful plants in the whole set Anyway guys, that is all for update number three. Uh, I hope I cover some good information for you Especially the arrow garden. That's the, that's one of the, always the fun part that people asked about and uh, also uh, hardening off your plants make sure you do that because uh, as I mentioned don't just take them outside and just start Put them in the soil and then you know the Sun beat down on it and it's gonna die uh, even the wind, wind can also affect your plants as well. So uh, uh, get them acclimated before you take them outside. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will start to uh, uh, compile update number four coming up very soon. 
So that would probably include me transplanting all the, the, the plants that I showed you earlier into the ground, into pots, and in places where they need to go. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.